In this video, I'll be proving that the Riemann integral and Lebesgue integral match up when the function is Riemann integrable. So, what we do is we start off by defining a new type of simple function, one that's more restrictive and one that is always Riemann integral and um, will always help us with the Riemann integral. Okay? It's called a step function. And what a step function is, it's like a simple function, but it only uses rectangles, okay? So what we do is we say, if x0 to xn is a partition of the interval a, b, then a step function phi from a to b to r is phi of x equals the sum from i equals 1 to n of alpha i times 1 x i minus 1 to x i. Okay, so let's sort of think about this. This right here creates a partition of this closed interval. And so what we do is we take this partition and we extend up rectangles with these scaled indicator functions. And then we end up getting this function, this step function with a bunch of just rectangles. Okay, Given your partition, you get a bunch of rectangles. Okay, and then what we can prove, theorem one, is that the integral of a step function is simply going to be equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of alpha i delta xi. Okay? So the Riemann integral of some step function is just going to be the uh, area of all the rectangles added up. And you can prove this. This is a homework. So look at my previous video, look at the definition there, and you can prove this out of it. And now what we do is we compare two different definitions of the Riemann integral, and we show that they are the same, is that we have our definition where we take the infimum of u of p f for partition p, right? We show that this is actually going to be equal to the infimum of the integral of phi of x dx for phi simple and phi bigger than or equal to f. Okay? So, what we do, again, is so we compare the partitions where the rectangle touches the function at its highest point over the partition interval, like this, and we compare that with just arbitrary arbitrary rectangles that are just bigger than it. And we can prove that these are simply going to be equal because the sum of u of p f for partition p is definitely going to be a subset of the set of the integral of phi of x dx for simple functions, so that the infimum of this is definitely going to be bigger than or equal to the infimum of this one, right? It's definitely going to be bigger than or equal to because if I have a subset and I have one that's inside the other, the lowest bound, the lower bounds on these, the subset has the bigger lower bound. Okay, so it's definitely going to be bigger than or equal to it. But then, there's another fact that any value in here is either going to be an element of this set or greater than every element in this set. Okay, because either it's going to be just touching the rectangle like this, or it's going to be bigger than the rectangle like that. Okay, so that the integral is either going to be bigger or the same as one element in here. So then we can then say that the infimum of this has to be less than or equal to the infimum of this by 
integral of phi of x dx is an element or integral of phi of x and upper bound on the set. So either greater than every element in the set. One of those has to be true. You can check the details on this, but one of these has to be true. Therefore, this, this infimum has to be less than this infimum because if I have this set, then this set, this one is less than or equal to this one. Okay, so this is one set and this is the other set, right? The infimum of this one is less than the infimum of this one. And this one has every element either in it or greater than it. This is less than or equal to it and greater than or equal to it, implying that these are just the same. Infima u of pf is going to be equal to the infima of these integrals of f of x dx. And as you can also prove, that the supremum of the lower um, sums is going to have to be equal to the supremum of the integral of phi of x dx for phi um, great, uh, less than or equal to x. Okay? We can now say, rephrase the Riemann integral, that the lower and upper integrals are, can be rephrased in terms of step functions. Okay? So definition two is the Riemann integral, right? It's going to be the Riemann integral where we say that the integral from a to b lower f dx is going to be the supremum of the lower partitions, right? Which is also going to be equal to the supremum of the integral of f of phi of x dx for phi less than or equal to f, right? And then the integral from a to b upper f dx is going to have to be equal to the infimum of the upper partitions, which is going to be equal to the infimum of the integrals for phi greater than or equal to f, right? As we just proved. So now we have this new definition of the Riemann in terms of step uh, functions, but step functions are simple functions. Remember this, they are simple functions. So now we can easily compare this with the Lebesgue integral. Theorem two, Riemann equals Lebesgue if f Riemann integrable. Okay, so how we prove this is we go ahead and do the integral from a to b lower f dx, okay? Which, remember, is going to be the supremum from right here of the integral of phi of x dx for phi less than or equal to f and phi step, okay? So it's going to be the supremum of smaller step functions, okay? Now this is going to be a subset, this set of the integral of step functions is going to be a subset of simple functions. Right? It's going to be a subset of that. And also note that the, for step functions and um, simple functions, the Lebesgue integral and the Riemann integral are trivially the same. Okay? So therefore, the supremum is going to be less than or equal to it. Would you agree with that? Because if I have my set right here and I have a subset, the supremum is less than this supremum. Okay? But this right here is going to be equal to the integral over the closed interval AB of F d mu. Okay? But then I know that this is going to be less than or equal to the integral from a, b, upper f, d, mu, right? Which I know is going to be equal to the infimum of the integral of f of x, d, mu, for phi greater than or equal to f and phi simple, right? 
This is how, this is the definition of this. But this right here is going to be a superset, is going to be containing the set of the integral of f of x dx, which is the same as the integral f of phi of x d mu for phi bigger than or equal to f, and phi a step function. Because every step function, again, is a simple function. And so, then the infimum right here has to be less than or equal to it. Okay, because if I have my two sets, I have one right here, subsets have bigger infimums. So this infimum has to be bigger than that infimum. Okay, but this right here is going to be my integral from a to b upper f dx. That's just my Riemann integral from this. And so, I, if I require that this one is equal to this one, then all these less than or equals to's collapse into equals. So that right here, keeping this in mind, that if the integral from a to b lower of f dx equals the integral from a to b upper f dx, like this, then if those are the case, then the integral from a to b lower f dx has to be to the integral from a to b from over the closed interval a b f d mu, which has to be equal to the integral over the closed interval a b of f d mu upper, which has to be equal to the integral from a to b upper f dx. So not only did I prove in one fell swoop that every Riemann integrable function is also Lebesgue integrable, but that the Riemann integral equals the Lebesgue integral in this case, because of this, these inequalities. And so, that's how you prove it. It's really quite simple, but it's really, really useful.